Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and it's been a little bit of time since I last filmed, um, uh, posted a video. I, you know, part of it was just for one week I was really tied up with things, and then I said, oh, I can, you know, if I miss one week, that'll be fine, and then um, I ended up getting sick. I ended up getting COVID, and um, <clears throat> you can hear I'm still a little congested. <laughs> And it definitely laid me out like in bed for a number of days and I'm still definitely recovering and getting my strength back. Uh, and I have been able to make it out to the garden um, once or twice since then, but you know, they're short spurts and it's made it harder to, um, to garden. So I haven't talked much about it because I'm still kind of coming to grips with it, but you know, I have experienced um, some disease issues with my tomatoes in the community garden. Um, with the plants. I've been trimming them back, cutting off diseased leaves as I find them, trying to keep the plants healthy. I'm even using rubbing alcohol, wiping down my tools on my hands between tomato plants to reduce spreading any diseases that haven't already spread to other tomato plants. But at that community garden plot, uh, really the challenge there is I don't know whether the disease that spread to them was spread by bugs, you know, going from plant to plant, carrying the disease over. Uh, I don't know if it was spread by the ground or the seeds because that's a new property for me. It's my first time growing things there. And uh, so there's just a lot of unknowns and it has been a really wet, hot year and tomatoes in heat and humidity, <laughs> well, they're much more susceptible to disease, to diseases and issues. Um, and as many of us have experienced, when temperatures are above 90 degrees, the tomatoes really just kind of freeze in their process. They, they stop, freeze is the wrong word because it's so hot, but they, they kind of go into a hold pattern until it cools down a little. And so they might drop their flowers before they actually set fruit. And I'll say I have been getting a steady stream of tomatoes, but it's just not as many tomatoes as I wanted. I had visions of getting so many tomatoes that I would have to be, uh, that I would have to be canning them right all the time. And that's really not been the case here. Now I've, I have a, a, an abundance of tomatoes to eat, um, and, uh, for fresh consumption, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not the great production. So I think next year, one of the things I'm probably going to do is, uh, in addition to continuing to build out the soil and trying to be more um, proactive in fertilizing and, um, you know, the plants, which this year I haven't really been, um, <clears throat> I'm going to probably try out some hybrids. When you go with an heirloom plant or an open pollinated plant, you can save the seeds year to year. and be guaranteed pretty much the next year's plant will look just like the plant you grew the prior year that you saved the seeds from. From a hybrid plant, you really can't do that. You can, I mean, something will grow, um, but it may not have the characteristics. It may have some of the bad characteristics of the parent plants that it came from. Um, and so you really don't uh, want to, to save seeds from hybrids. For me, when I started out in the gardening life, one of my goals was to learn how to save seeds from different types of plants. And I feel like I've accomplished that. I know how to save seeds from tomatoes now. And for me, the goal is no longer necessarily saving the seeds. You know, with all the disease issues and other things, the reality is I'm buying fresh seeds at this point for my tomatoes because I don't want to risk carrying the disease over in the seeds. So if I'm not saving the seeds, other than for the taste and experience of heirloom tomatoes, which are definitely, I would say, so far in my experience, unequaled. If I want tomatoes for uh, sauce or for canning or things like that, I'm going to try out some hybrids um, next year in hope because um, they tend to have higher productivity and more disease resistance and um, sometimes even more heat tolerance. So I have two tomato plants growing here. Uh, one is uh, a plant I got from a, as a seedling from a friend and it's one of my favorite tomatoes so far this year. I think it's I'll put the right name up above but it's like bored barred tomato or something like that. And the other one is the Art Colors uh, cherry tomatoes that are actually kind of almost like a mid-sized tomato that I got seeds and I grew from you by winter sowing I got them from Baker Creek. Um, and uh, since it rained yesterday some of them are splitting but I, wanna sh I wanted to wait. I didn't pick them yesterday because I wanted to wait until I could film how beautiful these tomatoes are um, and pick them for the camera. So let's go pick some of these beautiful cherry tomatoes. 
here is the art color tomato plant and i mean i have not trellised this thing up and it is leaning it is all up in the grill i don't know if you can see um it's like it goes here and then it's like leaning and combining into my echinacea plants over here because i haven't uh trellised it higher than this bendy thing but let's look up close at this gorgeous gorgeous tomato so this is not fully uh, developed. This is blushing, but since it rained yesterday, I'm still going to pick it. But isn't that gorgeous, that striation? Look at that. There's another one here. And this one has started blushing. So one of my rules this year has been i've noticed that a lot of the animals that will take a bite out of a tomato plant wait until it's got some color to it and it looks ripe they're not necessarily now they do sometimes take on plants that are uh, are not ripe yet evidence that some critter got into one of my tomatoes and ate it this is why i harvest them ripe before they're fully ripe some little squirrel was eaten in and it dropped down in the crook of this tree for the most part, I've learned that if I pick a tomato when it's an early in its blush stage and take it inside and just leave it on the counter, it doesn't have to be in the sun, that it will actually ripen and be just as delicious. Another exciting development here is that the board barred tomato plant has started sending new fruit. So you can see these tomato plants are not diseased uh, like the ones uh, back home, back at the community garden are. Um, and they're actually quite happy and healthy and I've stopped trimming them back. I'm just kind of letting them do their own wild crazy thing. Um, and this plant seems pretty happy overall, I'd say. Another plant I want to show you in my home garden is this cardinal basil. Look how gorgeous this thing is. Mm. It's so pretty and it looks like we're going to have some more flowers on it. What a lovely little uh, decoration to have. I'm definitely going to grow that in future years. Um, cardinal basil. It's so pretty. Strangely enough, one of my favorite flowers this year is actually, still, is actually these zinnias that are volunteers. I love the color fading of this zinnia. I think it's absolutely stunning. So I am 100% going to put a little ribbon or bow on this and let this particular one go to seed and try to save the seeds from it for next year. Because if I can have that in my garden again, oh, what a happy day that will be. <laughs> and the last thing I want to show you at the home garden is my edamame plants, which uh, are putting out flowers. Uh, mixed in with milkweed and uh, chokeweed but uh, we have flowers on our edamame plants which hopefully means we will have some edamame growing very soon to eat yum 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 it's 8 30 on a sunday morning <laughs> uh, and this is really the best time in the evening and in the morning it's only gonna get oh, look 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 over there There is a goldfinch. See it? <gasps> Yay! My first on-camera goldfinch sighting. Oh, yay! It's eating the zinnias. So, here's the garden overall as it currently looks. <laughs> I've been working on weeding it uh, since I got sick and uh, kind of cleaning it up. I've started laying down, they delivered a bunch of a huge pile of mulch near the entrance that my bed is at. So I started, um, you can see the boards over there still, but I started clearing out, putting cardboard down or newspaper and putting the mulch on top and I'm trying to re-clear a path here. Uh, over here we have the eggplants, we have some tomatoes in this first row, and then, you know, these are some random sunflowers I planted. Look. Yay! Happy sunflowers! <laughs> so before I go into any quick, any specific detail, I'll just do a quick walkthrough of how the garden looks. So like I said, this is where the eggplant are. And we have 
Look, there's a nice one, the Nagasaki Japanese uh, eggplant. This one is starting to look a little faded, so I think I'll harvest it. I usually let them get bigger, uh, but we got some growing there. This row is kind of my miscellaneous row where I've planted uh, things and sort of half taken care of them. So you can see the trellising for this cherry tomato plant <laughs> hasn't been very good. And I have amidst all of these eggplants, I planted the mountain, Thunder Mountain peppers. And look how fun these guys are. Let's find some curling ones. Look how fun that guy is. I, they're just such fun looking peppers, really. Once they turn red, they will look stunning. So that's a fun pepper to grow. Over here, yesterday I spent some time clearing this side. I did, this is my third bucket from just this side of the garden. Um, it was like that, but taller. Clearing out the path on this side because this is where I'm planning on planting some beans uh, and some other things for my fall crop as well as uh, I'm hoping to do some um, cover crops, which I'll talk about in a moment. But we have, look, <laughs> look at that, a baby bitter melon. Isn't that cute? It is so adorable. I've never cooked bitter melon before. Um, a friend gave me the seedling and I'm looking forward to trying it. I did have one bitter melon plant that uh, grew to size, but I was sick, so I didn't harvest it before it turned yellow. And over here, we have some vining beans. Uh, I can't remember the variety, but, oh, look at, look at a little bean sprout, a little pea sprout. Oh, it's so pretty. And then we have some, um, oh, I forgot what they're called, but I will tell you later. This is a shelling uh, bean. Sorry, it's a black and white bean for using in soups. Um, so you have to wait till these actually fully mature to full size and then until they um, turn dark. Another project I took on yesterday was clearing the path between my vegetable beds and the flowers. And I got mulched about halfway back but I'm gonna finish it up, but it'll look so much better to have that clear path here um, for the flowers. Let me show you a couple neat things that are going on here. First of all, this is the green coxcomb, which is actually more like a white green. Um, it's small still, but I am really looking forward to uh, it getting bigger this fall. And when I was weeding, it knocked it over a little bit, but I wanted to show you these really cool, get the chokeweed off of you. These really cool, uh, they're called, oh, they're called um, Flamingo Celosia because they have that pink tip. Oh, here's another example. These are staying up on their own. Don't they look neat? They look so cool. And this aisle here is my sort of unattended squash aisle. I'm still getting some squash from my garden and here is one of the ones that's still producing for me. Uh, this is a white scallop squash. Look how massive this thing is. It's really, really giant. Oh, there it is. Well, I'll take you. You're smallish, but I'll take you. Here's the row of peppers, and boy, have I got a lot of peppers to harvest. Here's one that's starting to turn red. They're not very huge, but for a first year growing peppers in this garden, I'm okay with that. This guy here is lemon drop peppers. <laughs> so now that they're turning yellowish oh there's a dark a bright yellow one here look at that these are supposed to be a hot pepper this pepper is by far my favorite pepper to grow and harvest and if you've been watching my channel you already know the name of it because i talk about it all the time jimmy nardello peppers they're a sweet italian pepper look at that gorgeous red 
They have a thin skin. Whew. You know, <laughs> it's only uh, 8.30 here, but it's already warming up. So sitting in the shadow of my beans, I don't mind. Um, but I've been thinking as I'm picking the peppers, I can talk that this year in my garden, I really want to build up the soil. And I've been thinking, how can I build up the soil in my garden without paying a lot for compost uh, and other uh, nutrients? Well, obviously one is have a compost pile, which I do in the back. So another one is to actually find ways to build up the soil over the winter. And so I've been looking into cover crops. Uh, I will grab the seeds and show you what I got in a moment. But basically, a cover crop is something you grow, um, you grow in the spring, early spring or late fall. Sometimes it overwinters, and you, um, and the idea is it's some plant that will provide some benefit to the soil. And you'll either at the end of that plant's life cycle, or usually before it goes to flower, uh, you will um either dig up the plant or um uh or dig it into the ground or just pull it up or or, or or break it down and just lay it there to break down over the winter or over the next few weeks or whatever and it provides its own natural compost and its own natural um nutrients for the soil and most often you do it to bring um, either to harvest nutrients from the air and the atmosphere or from under down in the soil um, and this is a oh look at this is the jalapeno ones that's got some jalapeno pepper plants here too oh yeah <laughs> um what i do with the where'd it go where'd my pepper go there you go don't hide from me and you know i am still going to try to grow a couple of fall crops for um you know for for the fall this year but really i think i can provide the most benefit to my garden um, by planting these cover crops and so and then having improved soil next year oh they're such pretty peppers aren't they such pretty peppers oh there's one that's going bad at the top i'm glad i'm harvesting them so the jimmy nardello peppers you can harvest them when they're not red yet but they're not sweet until they turn red i might try pickling some of these this year and see how they do Okay, and guts everything from this side. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that great harvest. This is the carrot pepper, true to its name. It's got that beautiful orange color. Oh yeah. And they're not quite ready yet, but these habanadas, which are heatless habaneros, are starting to get to maturity and we will harvest them once they turn a bright orange, I think, color. And then over here we have the kale that's still protected um, along with some buried um, cabbage plants. And right before I got sick, I cleared out the back fence, which just was full uh, I mean, the weeds were as tall as those vines you could see on it and broke it down in that pile. Now, that's all the green stuff I, I did yesterday, but um, it looks so much better back here. I put down cardboard and mulch, and now I'm able to come and sit here with my little um, setup and have some space to just relax and enjoy the garden from. Man, this part of the garden really does get sun. I need to put on some sunscreen in a minute. But first, let me show you what I got. I got, I got this from True Leaf Market. Uh, and part of the reason why I ordered from them, even though the prices aren't necessarily the most competitive, they're pretty good, but they provided a guide on cover crops that was 45 pages, I think, and was just so useful that I thought they put all that work into that guide. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, they're gonna benefit from having helped me so much. So, the first thing I'm doing is mustard, a mighty, uh, let's see, mighty mustard trifecta power blend mustard. 
there's a lot of seeds in this. It's four ounces. Uh, so this is one crop. Now the reason I'm doing mustard is because uh, it will die back uh, in the winter and it'll fall over and basically, or I'll take it down right after first frost and basically it sits there and it um, breaks down. But another reason I got this is because this provides a tap root that can be four to six feet long and will help break up this heavy clay soil in my garden. And the other cover crop I'm gonna grow are um, lentils, green unhold lentils. But lentils are good um, because they uh, will help with nitrogen and they're a smaller plant so they won't look quite as weedy, I'm hoping. Um, and I've read and watched some videos by farmers saying that this is one thing you can kind of grow at the same time as you have other crops going, um, that it will be a good companion plant um, to grow at the same time. And since I still have a lot of stuff growing in my garden that I'm going to keep there basically until the first frost, this is something I can plant around my tomato plants and can get going now uh, to overwinter um, and to um, use as a cover crop for helping build up the soil nutrition. Whew. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and otherwise I'll see you next time.